The Roman Empire was eventually torn from within. A series of emperors seized the reins of power only to meet violent deaths, either by the hand of their soldiers or assassinated. So by the end of the third century, the empire was divided into eastern and western sections with separate rulers for each. Constantine was originally a ruler of an eastern, the eastern empire, but he returned it to the one ruler system. However, he ultimately contributed to the end of the Roman Empire by dividing sections of the empire amongst his sons and by moving the capital from Rome to Constantinople, present-day Istanbul. This left Rome and the western part of the empire really vulnerable and they suffered many attacks while the eastern empire continued to grow. So even as the empire was falling apart in the west, Constantine in Constantinople continued large building projects to glorify himself and the empire and Christianity, the new official religion under Constantine. Constantine was the first Christian Roman emperor. Emperor Constantine's conversion to Christianity began the trend where official art of the Roman Empire, which had always been pagan, started to glorify the church. The Edict of Milan in 313 issued an edict of all of tolerance for all religions and specifically named tolerance for Christians who had been singled out for violent persecution by previous emperors. Constantine used visual propaganda to assert his power and authority, like many leaders we have seen before him. Authoritative, large, powerful images are important to communicate power. He did this through a colossal seated statue of himself installed in the Basilica of Constantine. It would have originally been over 30 feet high. The head alone, which still survives and which you can see here, is 8 feet and 6 inches high. There is a psychological power associated with this colossal statue. He has enormous eyes that look upward and are emphasized by deeply drilled pupils. There's a simplification of forms, so you can clearly see that this is a strong, powerful, calm ruler. Constantine was one of the only emperors that didn't wear a beard in his official portraits. This clean-shaven face is also reminiscent of pagan cult statues that people would have been familiar with. So even while he's introducing Christianity, he's using visual forms that people would have known. Constantine granted Christianity official recognition within the Roman Empire. He also sponsored an extensive building program Architecture under Constantine is traditional um, and it's, it embraces some of what we consider Roman art and some of what we consider Byzantine art, that is, art under the new Eastern Empire. Christians adapted the Roman basilica architectural style for their churches. So a basilica was originally a Roman assembly hall. But Christians adopted this form for their churches. So again, we see people adopting forms they're familiar with for new uses. So builders took this style, this basilica architectural style that they knew and adapted it to a new religion. So basilicas were originally used by the Romans for governmental activities, but now it's used for religious purposes. Here we see a reconstruction of old St. Peter's. In Old St. Peter's, the building had a flat timber ceiling. You can see that there's this um, courtyard, and then once people enter the courtyard, they enter the official church. So this long center aisle, that's called the nave. And the nave is this long center aisle, and it directs your eye right to the altar, which is the most important part of the uh, church here. So the nave is this long central aisle, and around it there are these columns, and it's meant to, to direct our eye towards the altar. These early Christian churches had really plain exteriors, but highly decorated interiors with decorations like mosaics. 
This is really different from ancient Greek temples because remember, they had highly decorated exteriors with all that sculpture all over the outside. This was because in Greek temples, the public could only access the exterior. In Christian churches, worshipers can access the interior. And so it's this space that was highly decorated. So that was called Old St. Peter's because there's a new St. Peter's. Old St. Peter's was built on the traditional burial site of St. Peter from the Bible, built over his shrine. The cathedral is named to honor him. Um, Old St. Peter's took about 30 years to build, but it no longer exists. It was replaced by what's there now, the new St. Peter's. This still is uh, in Rome. You can still visit it. It's on the same site, uh, built in 1626. This mosaic is inside of the Church of San Vitale. It is a centrally planned church from the 6th century. These mosaics are in the Byzantine style. It was completed during the reign of Justinian I. And the decoration on the interior of the church is almost entirely made up of mosaics. So mosaics are images that are made up of an assemblage of small and flat pieces of colored glass and stone. They are popular in churches because they are durable, they cover large areas, and they're easy to see. They also can be really shiny, so it creates this otherworldly sense. There are two mosaic scenes shown here. On the left is an image called Christ Enthroned. It's located in the apse of the church. The apse, A-P-S-E, is the domed area of the ceiling directly above the altar. So everyone looking at the altar could then look up and see this image. Christ is in the center and he's dressed in purple. He's seated on a blue orb, uh, symbolizing the universe and symbolizing his power above all the earth and his power over everyone in the church. He's surrounded by two angelic figures and two church fathers. His beardless face is typical of Roman art, uh, like the Constantine sculpture we saw. And you can note here that the artists have not quite mastered perspective, like we saw in um, other artworks. They look like they are floating in this space. The figures don't really look like they're on solid ground. Um, however, this kind of works thematically because they're not meant to be depicted on solid ground, but in the heavenly realm. On the right, you can see an emperor of Justinian. and. Emperor Justinian was the patron of this church, so he showed himself, also in purple, like Christ, surrounded by several military and clergy figures. And the fact that he is dressed in purple is on purpose. It's meant to connect himself thematically and spiritually with Christ. So Christ is shown ruling over the world, and Justinian, we're supposed to respect him as ruling over um, the earth. In both, you can see that this Byzantine style, it has really heavy, thick outlines around the figures. They also have these robes that cover their bodies, so the strength of their bodies is not emphasized. It's really different than like Greek figures where the human body is emphasized. In Byzantine art, spirituality is emphasized rather than the power of the human body. So we get lots of gold, lots of crowns but not so much the strength of the human body.